Um, Jeremy Johnson, come on up. Is everything all set for Jeremy? We have the great Jeremy Johnson joining us in studio. I'm getting on. People get so triggered when I go on my phone. And I just have to say, I go on my phone because I don't have a computer open for like email and stuff. And, and I get my Discord questions over text. So I need to check my phone to do things like say that Jeremy Johnson is an author, editor, host of the Mutations podcast, which I subscribe to. I've been a guest on. He's author. He's an author for Revlar Press. You don't have the name of it, but what's the name of your new book about Gene Gepser? Oh, it's called uh, Seeing Through the World, Gene Gepser and Integral Consciousness. So, and I will say, you know, because obviously this is a lot of terrain to cover in like 10, 15 minutes, but, and we've done a primer on integral theory, we'll do more, but basically who is Gene Gepser? What is this sort of integral angle on things? Yeah, so Gepser, um, he's one of these, and you've mentioned integral theory and, and integral thinking on the show uh, over the yeah. past year or so, and we were, had that last uh, episode together. So Gepser, uh, he was a mid-century thinker, philosopher. He was born in 1905. Actually, he was born today, so it's very appropriate we're doing oh, this today, wow. August 20th, Happy uh, in 1905, and he died in 1973. Um, and he was a German-Swiss thinker. Um, who basically came up with like a lot of these mid-century philosophers, this kind of sweeping uh, history of consciousness. But what I like about Gebser is that unlike a lot of these other, um, you know, uh, mythology studies, et cetera, et cetera, thinkers, Gebser had, well, first of all, biographically, he was associated with poets and bohemians. He fled Germany as the brown coat, brown shirts were, were starting to come out. He uh, was living in Franco Spain for a number of years. He was nearly killed at the border. So he was amongst intellectual and cultural circles that were usually targeted by the fascists. Right. So he has a very keen sensitivity to some of the problems that Europe was facing in the mid century, civilizational crisis, you could call it. And he has sort of what some thinkers call or describe a, a kind of a meta perspective on not only history, but also theory and um, looking at complex social systems from this kind of big picture approach. Um, and on top of that, he was kind of a poet and bohemian himself. So, so his sensibility and his attitude is a little bit different than a lot of these other thinkers on consciousness studies from that time. Would you say, so can you explain a little bit more what that, like what, what were his basic idea framework and my guess is you would say that he was less um he wasn't a lot of those narratives could easily become linear and sort of like basically just kind of western grand chauvinist narratives essentially exactly and what's interesting in his main book which you could check out it's a it's a quite a tome it's called ever present origin uh it came out in 1949 in that book, he's actually going at those narratives very directly and trying to critique them. He's, he's, he's saying, okay, well, this positivist notion that the West has this, you know, higher consciousness or more developed consciousness than the past, and that we're moving towards some kind of progressive direction in history where the technological and the rational is going to master everything. He, he clearly saw the writing on the wall in the mid-20th century that that's not enough, right? Like a lot of post-war thinkers... He also was questioning the, the, the assumptions or naivety about progress. And right. so he had that kind of written in, into his philosophy. And again, I kind of find that sort of unique for somebody writing in the 40s, you know. Definitely. Uh, and especially actually because, I don't know if we'll get to it in this episode, but, you know, with, with integral theory that comes later on and sort of the transpersonal movement in the 1970s, some of the, those ideas kind of come back in the sort of trajectory of history. Um, and Gebser really just wasn't about that at all. So how would you define, I mean, we are putting these terms. So what, what is integral theory? What is it trying to do in say like the Gebser variant or, and you know, if you want to, you can integrate, you know, Deschardins a name, Sri Arbindo's a name, but like, what is this actually doing? And maybe why would it be? Uh, relevant in something like you were talking, we were having a discussion about going even back to like Renaissance perceptions um, of, of perspective taking and the advancement of the ability to sort of have an individual perspective. 
but then also the trajectory of that fragmentation mm -hmm. as an example, which you, you kind of situate us. Yeah, yeah. So, so actually, um, you know, what helps too is that you had Connor Habib talk with you recently on on the show. And Love Connor. Yeah, I did Connor's a great, great show uh, on his podcast as well. Everybody check him yes. out. Um, and Connor was mentioning phenomenology, and I think uh, that's a good word to cross over with Gebser. Gebser is very interested, when he talks about the history of consciousness, he's looking at how the self situates themselves in time and space, how they embody themselves in the world. Are they more kind of thinking oriented? Are they more embodied oriented? Are they uh, kind of an oral culture? Are they more of a literary culture? And what do those orientations do to sense making, right? So in the Renaissance, and this is where Gebser gets kind of interesting and, and relevant, and I write about this in my book, in the Renaissance, what he calls, and what we know of in art theory perspective, right, having a sense of three-dimensional space, standing in a three-dimensional plane and kind of looking at the, the vanishing point, uh, the perspective arises uh, and com sort of comes to the forefront, uh, at least in the Western Renaissance, uh, during that Renaissance period, but it's a kind of orientation to the world that Gebser saw as sort of coming to a conclusion in the 20th century where that style of thinking where it kind of cuts you cut yourself off from the whole by having this sort of perspectival vantage point that style of thinking of separating of parsing apart reality in a very spatial orientation is what he saw as kind of coming to or coming through a sort of a civilizational collapse and he interestingly enough when we were talking about this uh uh in a previous conversation, um, he writes about how the perspectival fragmentation of culture would lead to a, a place where basically no one's able to talk with anybody anymore, and the the compulsion towards ratio, right, to breaking down reality into into more and more finite bits and pieces where everybody has their own totality, will become the kind of the end point of of Western perspectival culture. But the the flip side of that is, of course, and maybe another time we'll, we'll really dive into this, uh, he saw the inception of an integral culture, which is where the right. integral word comes from, that there are different styles, modalities of thinking that are, on the one hand, kind of bringing back, and in a sense the contemporary word would be decolonizing our modes of thinking and perception. Right. Uh, and then on the other hand, sort of leaning into what's what's emerging in the future, right? So different styles that are, you might call ecological thinking or... Um, and economic systems that might be post-capitalist. And he was discussing all of these things, again, in the 40s, uh, which is why I think he's such an important thinker to kind of bring to the forefront in the consciousness culture, because a lot of these things interface with what you talk about on this show, right? right. So, totally. and, and, and for folks who always who kind of push back a little um, in the integral community and say, well, I don't know if you could say Gebser is a leftist or not, I mean... He says, you know, that the emergence of the left in the history of, 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 in Western history is an indication of this emergent integral structure, which is what he called it, the integral structure or the aperspectival world. So, and the idea of an integral is that you can, is that instead of that, okay, there's these different modes of cognition, perspective, and ways of being in the world, whether it's self, community, body perception, mental perception. He would certainly include things like artistic, spiritual uh, uh, perspectives, right? And that, and so some of these narratives can get extremely linear because they can kind of just sort of be almost like new age positivism, which is like, okay, society's progress, they grow in complexity. And instead of just the standard model that a lot of people are still running around with, which is like, we started with agriculture, then we have tools, then we had a steamship, now we have the internet, now we have phones. And then we just add on top of that some kind of like spiritualist vision, which is, you know, kind of ironic because in some ways you're sort of fusing the kind of techno utopia with some very, you know, some very shaky, non empirical, new agey ideas. And, but what Gebser's saying is that no, there is actually this massive range in which people uh, and, and, and uh, individual and communities experience, perceive, and integrate reality. They all have validity. They all exist in different contexts and different places. And the integral mode actually starts giving you the capacity to move in and out and 
operate inside of all these domains in a way that's that's honorable and effective and and integrated and maybe the extent to which and i think this is the part that isn't about progression but is just objectively true that you know in 2019 if you're in a situation where you have access to like you can engage in any tradition you want in the world. You can understand a variant of Chinese Buddhism. You can try to engage in the latest discoveries of genomics. You can, you know, read CLR James. This is, you know, you can read Fatima Mernisi. You can listen to music from anywhere on the planet. And so that in some way, although what I think is interesting about Gepser is because he's he's so sophisticated. He knows it isn't just informational. So you can be engaging in all of these things with like an extremely narrow, fragmented perspective. Mm -hmm. But it's the foundation of the of a culture that can start to move in between all of these ways of being. Does that kind of make sense? Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the the idea is is that the totalizing perspectival vision that Gebser says is responsible for the age of colonization, that is responsible for the economic system that, that we've run with since, you know, the inception of modernity. That style of thinking is no longer the privileged center or locus point of, of well, our attitudes, our artistic styles, etc. And that style of thinking is increasingly going to come across some kind of crisis. It's going to self implode. It's going to self uh, self destruct. It's going to go through some kind of which he witnessed in his time a civilizational crisis. And what's interesting is he didn't say you know he lived through World War II. He didn't say that was the crisis alone. He said this is a, this is something that is a much larger and systemic and kind of a, a meta historical movement that's actually happening. And so we have to think about this as the kind of the the underlying ground that we're standing on that's falling apart, and we have to anticipate this going through a continued, um, I guess, intensification of crisis in the coming centuries. What are the roles of the spiritual and contemplative practices in this? Yeah, that's a great question. So, so for Gebser, uh, one of the like, the mode, the way that you can move this out of the abstract and the theoretical, which is admittedly important, and into a more embodied sense, is some form of contemplative practice. He was. You know, Gebser was a poet. He was a um, a very big fan of, of Rilke. He did a lot of studies on Rilke, but he was also um, kind of a, a, I would say, a natural contemplative in his own right. And if you look at the writing, and this is why he's associated with the consciousness culture in historically in the 60s and 70s, he was very drawn to the the work of the revolutionary yogi Sri Aurobindo, and he describes Aurobindo as sort of this expressing this uh, spiritual insight of this integral consciousness in his own way through um, Indian spirituality. And he also mentions Tarot. Aurobindo was a yogic Vedic based philosopher who also created his own sort of modernized map and was also a, mi a militant. His, his initiation into spiritual practice, I believe, was when he was imprisoned by the British mm -hmm. for being an anti-colonialist revolutionary and actually of the armed wing. Uh, as well. So just context yeah, for our yeah, yeah. And I believe the British called him the, the most dangerous man in India at the right. time when he was a, a revolutionary. So so Gebser saw that, that there was a spiritual dimension to this new integral structure. And if we think about it, I mean, uh, uh, most cultures have some kind of spiritual dimension and component to them. I think it would be kind of colonial of us to assume that right. that, that isn't important and it isn't Definitely. worth looking at and Absolutely. integrating. So, so that was a big part, and I was also going to mention Teilhard de Chardin, the Jesuit uh, theologian and, and mystic and philosopher himself, uh, also somebody that Gebser associated what he was writing on with. And you know, uh, Teilhard is just a whole other conversation, but the phenomenon of of man would be a good book to to start with with him. So, so there's a spiritual component in a, in the sense of presence. And I think just as a kind of a modality and a practice, Gebser suggests that, you know, we develop some kind of contemplative meditative practice while we're working through these things, not in the theoretical, but also what he calls the concrete, right? To concretize these the, the history of consciousness and also to be present to what is emerging 
in the present, right? What is manifesting not only in the in the individual, sp- what's the spiritual illness of our society, but then also what is kind of creatively coming forward, what is creatively emerging in culture. And that, of course, is the whole second part of uh, Ever Present Origin. That's what he called the manifestations of the aperspectival world. And it was what we today might call like complexity or, or whole systems thinking, et cetera. Not quite, I mean, it's not just about the data and the facts, et cetera. There's these intuitive aspects of kind of grokking the whole, right? right. Actually, in the ne- it shows up in the negative sometimes, and it's easier to see it in, in first in the sense of a catastrophe, right? Because a lot of folks are t- saying today that the Anthropocene, right, and climate change and the ecological crisis we may not know all the data and all the facts about it, but we have this feeling, right? We have the sense like the whole system is broken and we get that and we sense that and we intuit that, but we can't really necessarily articulate the details quite yet. It's that kind of sensitivity to the whole that he's saying is sort of the beginning of this, this integral structure, this integral style of, of thinking. That's fascinating. And I, I do think this stuff is incredibly important because I think and it's so hard. The only other, we've got a few more stories to get to, but there's there's so many aspects of this that is so true and so fundamental that, but is still hard to discourse in some ways because the cheapened, dumbed down version of this is, you know, like the ability to actually really take all perspectives is a fundamentally important. It's important strategically. It's important spiritually. It's a, has been dumbed down into like, well, you know, both siderism and all of the trash fake civility culture. But this is a much deeper and different order thing in which we'll talk about more. But and but some of the themes that we're gonna cover in the next couple of minutes are definitely gonna have echoes here. You've just watched a Michael Brooks show video and you can watch all of our full main live shows every Tuesday night at around 7 p.m. Eastern time and subscribe to get all of the clips you want. We're covering the globe. We're focusing on international relations, the intellectual dark web. We're having fun. We're doing deep dives with a lot of amazing guests. Of course, become a patron for the whole thing at patreon.com slash TMBS or subscribe to this YouTube channel and help us keep growing and get that content out there. Subscribe below.